Welcome to Banking on Experience, the one-stop shop for all your financial services tips and tricks, the future of business and the future of the customer. Here is your host from CRM Next. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Banking on Experience. I'm your host today, James Gilbert. I am super stoked to have the guest on that we have today, Nate Brown, who I know really, really well from my Cloud Cherry days, uh, who I look up to a ton. Nate, welcome to the podcast and thanks for being on. What's going on, James? We just missed the National Red Hair Day, which was yesterday. I didn't even know it was. You know, it, it was. It's funny we because we still celebrate together today by doing a podcast. Yes, we can. I'll tell you what's funny is I used to fight people all the time because they used to call me a ginger. And I, <laughs> yeah. I, I am not a ginger, believe it or not. My beard is, but <laughs> I have very blonde hair. Um, yeah, anyway, it's it's one of those things I used to fight people with, and now I've just learned to accept it because people see my kids, and some of my kids have, you know, reddish hair too, and it's like, yeah, I can't deny it now. <laughs> it makes you distinctive, James. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, Nate, I, I, I just wanted to give you a quick quick intro on some of the things that we used to do together. You know, me and Nate sure. used to work together at Cloudcherry. Specifically around some of the CX Champion contests that we ran there, which were a big hit in the CX world. Uh, you know, some of the other things that we did together was, you know, he helped judge one of those contests. He's a significant contributor to the CX community, uh, specifically around CX Accelerator. And now, Nate, you're in a new role. You want to talk a little bit about that and give an introduction to yourself and where you're at now? Yeah, I'd love that, James. Thank you for the opportunity to do so. I'm a, a student of CX. I love customer experience work and, and the people that create great experiences. I love studying the results of the work and, and the people and the motivators behind it all, the psychology behind it all. It's just a fascinating thing for me. And such, it's such an important work as we work hard to reduce the, the stress and friction that happen in people's lives. And we can do that through great experience design. Um, So that's really how I've dedicated my career and and my thought process is is how can I help to make that happen. And so I teamed up with Officium, who thinks very similarly, and uh, love love my boss and the CEO, Jerry Leisure, uh, who I believe just did some video content with your CEO, Joe. Is is that right, James? Yes, I did. It was actually a pretty good episode talking about banking and gaming, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but not quite as detailed. Very cool. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great company to work for, and, and I've got a, a unique role as chief experience officer. I get to go in and help our customers, our officium customers, to design those experiences, both player experiences, patient experiences, and general customer experiences. And then I also get to be a, um, a thought leader, ambassador, writer, speaker on the, on the topic of CX. So it's a, it's a dream job for sure. Uh, not only getting to do the work and get my hands dirty in it and learn through the trial by fire, but then getting to turn around and share the great things that I'm learning and evangelize the work of CX. Uh, I feel like a kid in a candy store over here. Yeah, I got to say some days I'm a little jealous because you work in an industry that is just so much fun. (laughs) Oh, I do. And, you know, (laughs) being the nerd that I am, I'm a little bit of a gamer, but I'm not quite the gamer that some of the folks on my team are. I'll tell you what, we have some really hardcore gamers on the CRM next team. <laughs> Everything's a game. I mean, it's just amazing how, I mean, the gaming industry is just going to transform and, and just really become life. I mean, everything's going digital. Everything's becoming these digital experiences and, and we're making them really fun and engaging and, and gamified. So it, it's just really fun to watch the things that are happening in, in, in the gaming space. And I mean, we're making player experience a thing. We have a really fun model that we use not only to depict that player experience but to also be able to prove as you as you improve that experience and engage different personas of players in different ways how that can unlock share of wallet and customer lifetime value player lifetime value over time Uh, so it's just fascinating work yeah i think there's there's so many things that i think different verticals can learn from the gaming industry which i you know we're going to get into that today because the, the banking world, and I, I would even go so far to say credit unions can learn a lot from how the digitalization of the share of wallet is is done by the gaming world. So I, I'm excited to talk about that. But before we get into that, 
you know, Nate, one of the main roles that you play there at Officium Labs is really implementation of CX, right? And helping people build their CX programs. So, you know, I'm going to take my my hat from from CRM Next as well as uh, my experience at Cloud Cherry, and I'll talk through the top three things that I think are challenges. But before I do, I'd love for you to dive in and talk about what you are running into. What are the top three things that you just think, man, just about everybody is worried about this or not quite sure how to handle it? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I think one that really pops out in my mind is that customer experience has morphed into a, a bit of a, a danger zone for a lot of companies. And, and sadly, the failure rate of many CX initiatives is very, very high by, by several models and analysts. It's pushing over 90% failure rate of CX initiatives to demonstrate real value and prove the ROI of their work. So it's time to throw out that old playbook for sure and to focus in on the things that we can be doing together to make the results stick and to motivate people towards creating better customer experiences. And in my mind, it's all around change management. And we seem to have kind of deviated from a foundation of that and a knowledge that we had in the past around change management, going all the way back to John Coder and leading change and just these great principles that, that we had that would guide us in the past with our major transformation initiatives. And, uh, and CX has kind of become its own little zone and function, which, which can be powerful and helpful in some contexts, but in other times it's actually, it causes a big problem because it's almost like the burden of the customer experience and, and doing the work of CX gets sequestered into this little team, this little peripheral team inside of a, a larger organizational uh, in, infographic. So how can we take that, unpack that, <laughs> and, and start to unlock customer experience inside of all these other divisions and to make the work of CX the, the burden, the privilege, the responsibility of all of these leaders where we get to help them and guide them in their strategy, but the work becomes their own, which, which is much different than just pushing it off into a, a little division over here. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, we ran into this all the time at CloudCherry, and that was the fact that people would become a champion of the project of, you could call it a project or you could call it an initiative um, of a CX implementation. And they'd get super excited about it, and we'd have this champion on board. But then they'd go up funnel to try and get all of the data points and all the points in which they need to connect a digital experience. And then they'd run into marketing, and marketing would be like, "No, we kind of do things our own way." Yeah. And then they then they'd run into sales. Well, we don't really get feedback with customers while we're in the middle of a sales process. And then they'd run into customer success. Well, we don't really have a closed loop with sales and marketing. <laughs> So, I mean, it's just this siloed approach that, that has always ran into it. And I, I truly believe one of the big challenges that everyone faces is that you have to start internally first. Uh, I, just just from, the, from all of the people that we ran into and all the people we talked to, it's really an, an employee first mentality. And then it expands into the customer. And I think that in order to get the right alignment, I do think you have to have the highest level of management be seeing that as a complete value to the business moving forward. And if they don't see it, it's going to be a tough sell. Yeah, I mean, you, you almost have to have that executive level being the one who's, who's pushing it forward and saying, this is going to be a long-term priority for the business. Otherwise, what you do have is that short-term shiny penny thing that'll happen, the quarterly shareholder model where you might have a moment in time where people say how important customer experience is, but as soon as you miss a revenue target or, or some other major transformation creeps in as a priority, CX just immediately gets pushed onto the back burner. So we have to prevent that and, and to make it something that's sustainable and helpful and embedded into the culture of the business, which requires us approaching it as a true culture change a long-term two to three year run rate transformation effort that, that requires us to go through these stages of transformation uh, that, that John Coder and other models are so great at, Adcar and, and others. So uh, until we take that long-term approach, until we have that executive support, it's really hard to get this thing started. You know, I, I have had to do it. I have done it to some degree 
to build an organic grassroots program. Uh, but it's, it's hard work and it, it's hard to really prove the value of that work and to be able to show uh, identifiable results that really stand the test of time um, unless you have the, the fertile ground where CX is ready. So, I mean, that's one of the first things that I'm, I'm doing, James, is I come in and assess what, what does the soil look like here? <laughs> if we plant the CX seed, what is the likelihood of this being able to grow? And if it can't, I mean, we have a whole variety of identifiers that rocks, rocks in the soil that we need to pull out first. And, and once we remove some of those rocks, we can really get into planting. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And you know what's funny is, you know, a lot of times marketers will take the, the, the stance of trying to build a brand promise. And a lot of times that's where it starts. It's got to be so simplified. And, uh, mm. you know, at CRM Next, we have, a, we have a very simple promise. We simplify work, drive growth, and deliver on experience. But we can't do any one of those okay. without the other. So it's yeah. it's interesting. One of the things that you had mentioned, right, is is a challenge of you know people want to drive to a revenue and see the growth there, but they oftentimes will sacrifice the experience to get there. And I really think that that is a, another big challenge that people face is is helping people, especially leaders, realize that you can't have one without the other. A growth engine is only better with a customer experience engine behind it. Yeah, I mean, you're hitting on so many things there. I mean, the, the, the whole alignment between marketing and CX is, is so important. I mean, is marketing this creating this brand promise and putting out into the world the, the experience that you're supposed to be able to deliver on, the thing that makes you unique and distinctive from every other business out there? And it's the experience then <laughs> that comes and either makes that a reality and backs it up or, two, makes it just a website and just a bunch of false copy that is empty and shallow. So, I mean, until marketing and CX are saying, wow, you know, here's, here's our brand promise. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to die on this hill right here, this one. This is us. And then a strong CX function that can back that up. Understand if you're even doing that. What are the thoughts and perceptions of our customers today? Do we know? Do we know if we're doing a great job with this brand promise or not? And then in those friction points, in those areas we're failing, how can we work together tap into those change management fundamentals to improve the lives of our customers. It's amazing to me how oftentimes people do not pull their customers when they're building their website or how oftentimes when they're making changes to their website, which is really the first impression of a brand, that they don't talk to their customers about those changes. Like We just went through an iteration as a marketing team here at CRM Next and I, I even just barely did a post on this on LinkedIn, and it's it's all about, you know, your copy needs to be simple. It needs to be simple and so simple that your kids can explain it to their friends. <laughs> and, if, and if they can't, then your customers can't. And they certainly couldn't explain it to somebody that's higher than them where they need to get buy-off or anything like that. And I think that it's a big gap that exists to your point with with marketing and CX is there's not enough collaboration that happens with the customer's eyes. You know, we have a motto within within our marketing team at CRM Next where you don't do anything unless you're looking through the customer's eyes. And we have two customers. We have sales and we have those who buy. And Understood. and that's that's something that you know, we're we're practicing what we're preaching, but it's it's not easy and it, there's certainly roadblocks and and we haven't perfected it yet either, but it's something that I think that every organization can do. You know, have from from a credit union perspective, they should have their members be looking at their website when they're building their mobile banking experience. They should be running that through their members. You know, from a gaming perspective, you should be running players through your experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And yep, we do. Yeah, I, that's that's where the bread and butter is because I I can't tell you how many times where. I go to a website and it just seems like they're talking a completely different language and world that, and I've been a marketer for a long time. I should be able to understand the stuff that's on there. And I go there and I'm like, what in the heck, what are they talking about? <laughs> have you ever, James, have you ever read that book story brand by Donald Miller? Ooh, I haven't read that one. Nope. I really like that one. And it, it is a very simple way to, to get an understanding of, of this whole concept of, your your 
website being your brand and an entry point into your brand. And they talk about how you know the what? customer is the hero of the story. I actually think I have read this book. It's a good one. It's been out there for a little while. They do workshops and things on it. But yeah, he that, has like a he has concept. like a website you can like download a workshop with, and it has like a whole like workbook, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've gone through that process of like identifying. I mean, first of all, who is your customer? <laughs> a lot of times, that's not a question that gets asked <laughs> in that level of clarity. Who is the hero of this story? Who, who are we trying to guide to us, and then from there become the the guider and the counselor and and that. That individual who is the champion and and the the empowerment that allows that customer to find their definition of success and to make it a reality. And that, that's what we're trying to do, right, is, is solve a major problem. Who is that customer that's the hero? How can we then guide them and be that guide for them? And what does success look like for them? What what is it that the customer needs to happen to where they, they get to to have that final scene in their movie? where the sun is setting and, and they're on their own little mountaintop. I love it. Yeah, I forgot that I read that book. It's a good, it is a good one. I remember it because it walks through a brand promise as well. Talks about yeah. how you should simplify your brand promise, making it easy for people to understand and making it tangible in the sense that you can actually deliver on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, good points, Nate. Well, I mean, look, we talked about change management fundamentals in some in some areas let's talk, let's dive a little deeper into that what are some ways that you can you know to your point systematically change change management well if you if you look at that john coder model i mean the first thing that you're doing is is you're you're gaining urgency around the change that needs to happen Otherwise, you don't need to make a change. <laughs> so if, if there is a need to insert customer experience and to undergo a customer experience transformation, then you need to create urgency around that with the senior leadership team and the executives that are, that are there. Hopefully, the CEO, the, the senior leaders are helping you to do that. They already understand the urgency, and they're going to help create that within the rest of the organization. If not, then your first step is to create that urgency right then and there talking about how i mean looking at some of the incredible statistics around market share for those customers that lead on the tepkin and forrester cx indexes and the market share that they are gobbling up associated with with their with their positive cx transformations and those companies that are falling behind in the area of cx and the revenue implications that are there and there, there's so much statistical knowledge that we can use to create that urgency around evolve or die <laughs> yeah. customer experience is no longer a cool option that some some customers are, or some companies are going to pursue it's either we do this and we get good at this or we're not going to be here so it's, it's establishing that urgency and then fast forwarding a little bit from there to a, a cx change coalition developing a change coalition is is like number three in the coder model and i, I believe that's the only way to get a true CX uh, initiative going and to get that momentum that you need. And as we mentioned before, to unlock the work inside of these different divisions instead of just sequestering the work inside of a small CX unit. Couldn't agree more. And you know, one of the things that you touched on uh, really hits home for me. We at Cotre, we we had a, a customer called Clearview Federal Credit Union. They were one of the best credit unions that I've ever seen handled member experience and customer experience. And they just did it so well. Um, nice. So well, in fact, that like they had NPS that was, that was higher than some of the biggest brands out there. And yeah. one of the things that stood out when we had talked to them about just what they're doing well is everyone within the organization being aligned to the goals and metrics of what the members and customers were saying and doing. And it's it's fascinating to me that when you really have that complete org alignment and you have all functions within the business with different goals, but they all align to the same strategy, and that's to serve the customer, then, then it becomes much easier to do your function. Sales becomes a lot easier because customers are more willing to talk about your brand. Marketing becomes easier because then you have brand advocates. 
customer yeah. success becomes easier because you're helping them build their personal brand. Hmm. It's just one of those things where too often people overlook it and they think they think in their functional eyes or in their functional roles where they they have to look at this from a sales perspective or they have to look at this from a customer success perspective or a marketing perspective and really when push comes to shove it's it's everyone's job to figure out how they do one thing and one thing only and that's to serve those that buy your product and buy your service yeah I think that's why a journey map is so cool. You know, if we do a great customer journey map, then what happens is you get to see that entire end-to-end customer experience from the lens of the customer, as you said earlier, James, which is so important. But then any employee, regardless of what function of the company they represent, they can see themselves inside of that journey and be able to read, oh, wow, here's the expectations that the customer has here where I sit, (laughs) where I have the biggest influence over the customer journey, and here's the pain points that they're experiencing. Here's some of that voice of customer data that we've collected, and here's that key CX KPI that we've associated to this touch point that has the best correlation to customer loyalty right here, whether that's customer effort score or customer lifetime value or an NPS or something like that. Or even like a composite customer health score, customer engagement score. Yep. There's so many great ones out there that we can correlate to different parts of the journey. And then, yes, we all get to contribute to the customer experience in a different way, in a personalized way, based on our gift set and the type of job that we're in. But you're, you're right. The end game is the same. We're trying to serve that customer better. We're trying to unlock that loyalty and earn the right to grow the business through great customer experience design. Yeah, it's you, you when you really think about it too. If we were if we're looking at you know both of our verticals, you know you serve the you serve the gaming world, we serve the financial services world, and when you I'll just use a credit union as an example. There are so many little journeys that are are often forgot about. People think of like one oh if we're gonna go down the journey mapping. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's a beast as, it, as itself, right? Being able to get the alignment across the organization to be able to do a journey map is tough. Uh, being able to understand a journey that exists across all functions is tough. But then diving even deeper into those micro journeys that exist. You know, when you're going to a bank or a credit union, you have, your, your journey is, is when you go to the branch and you're yeah. talking to a teller. And now that's changed. It's, it's digital. So now your journey, what used to be with a teller, is direct communication via email or text or phone that's mm-hmm. happening digitally. So how do you yeah. tie those conversations together in a little micro journey? Because you want to track that journey as its own. You want to be able to see, well, how are we doing in this area? And then the broader journey is, well, how do we maintain them as a, as a member of our, of our credit union? How do we maintain them as a member? And also, how do we ensure that we get additional share of wallet? How do we make sure that the next loan they do with us is going to be through us and not one of our competitors? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I, think, it, yeah. I think it translates really well, Nate, to, to the banking world too. Or sorry, to the gaming world too. Because when you think about it, like gamers, they have those same type of micro journeys that they, that they are experiencing. You know, if they need support on something, it's it might be totally unique to to a specific game, right? Rather than the platform that they're on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're you're exactly right in that. Those micro journeys are are important. You know, if you can't fit them into touch points on on an overall map, it, it might help to simplify and and give you that overall visual. Um, but diving into that digital experience is is critical, and I think more and more the overall experience is morphing in to that digital experience, both in the break banking realm and in the gaming realm. And, and let me say too, you know, Officium does uh, service customers well beyond the, the gaming space. So we're, we're happy to work with anybody on their customer experience transformation. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, Nate, we're coming close to time, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to see if there's any closing thoughts you wanted to leave the audience and um, maybe we could, I mean, we've hit on we've hit on a lot. <laughs> There's, we could we could probably have like four or five episodes just on the stuff we've hit on. We can break it out. 
Uh, so I'd, I'd love to do that again. I think we have a lot of good content here, but what do you think, man? Yeah, I would just encourage those that are doing customer experience work or that are curious about it. Maybe you're a marketer. Maybe you're a customer service person and you're like, wow, this CX thing is really interesting. Dive in and start reading. Do Chief Customer Officer uh, 2.0 by Gene Bliss. Do Heart of the Customer by Annette Franz. Do Effortless Experience by Matt Dixon. Do Fusion by Denise Leon. You know, there's some great resources that are out there that will accelerate your learning curve into this area. And it will equip you to not only do your current job better, <laughs> but it'll equip you into the future as we see more and more of a transformation into experience design. Whether you're in marketing or customer service or whatever, it's almost irrelevant. It's going to be experience design, and you'll want to have the ability to do this EX and employee experience and CX type of work um, to enhance those overall experiences. So equip yourself, and, and I'd like to encourage you too. I mean, this, this work is so important. It is really hard, and it takes forever <laughs> to, to experience <laughs> success, uh, but I mean, it, it's so important. I mean, quite literally, when we do this work well, we're making somebody's life better and easier through through great experience design. So it, it's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting over and challenging yourself to excel in this area of, of customer experience and beyond. So let me be a resource to you. Let Officium be a resource to you. CX Accelerator is another great resource to tap into. Um, just don't don't get discouraged. Everybody is challenged in doing this work because it's so holistic in nature. And there's a lot of rocks in that soil, uh, but it, it's too important for us to, to, to lay the hoe down and to, and to not keep planting. Yeah, totally agree. And just to echo what Nate says about all of those wonderful people that he mentioned, you know, I've had a, a really good opportunity to talk with just about every single one of those folks. And I, I echo his sentiment on they have really great resources, uh, and including Nate himself, by the way, who helps run the CX Accelerator community. And if you really want a community that you can bounce ideas off of, that's a great one. Go in there, ask your questions. Uh, all of us, right? We're all trying to figure this out together. And it's unique with each person that, that's dealing with it. Each one of your digital journeys and uh, physical journeys that are in a branch or maybe at a location are going to be completely different. But the whole point of, of all of this is, you know, it's a crawl, walk, run. And it does take time. So you got to have the right people and you got to have the right minds that are there at the table. So thank you, Nate. Appreciate everything that you did, did here. And hopefully this was valuable to the listeners and we'll keep, we'll keep doing these kinds of episodes more often. Awesome. Thank you, James. Thanks everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of Banking on Experience. Remember to tune in each week and subscribe where we aim to simplify work, drive growth, and deliver on experience.